you're going just through the motion. Okay? Let's all stand up, please. And let us open our Bible. The book of Malachi chapter 1, verse number 14. Ano pong sabi ng Panginoon sa Malachi chapter 4, 1 verse 14? The Bible says, But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrifices unto the Lord a corrupting, for I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. May you bless us. Give us grace and mercy. And uh, thank you for this one wonderful time that we will be having our stewardship conference in this great church, a church that was started out of a vision, out of a mission, and thank you for using Dr. Bob Hughes in starting the mission, and thank you for calling Dr. Armid Salva as his pastor and emeritus pastor that we have now, and thank you for empowering and enabling uh, Pastor Kent Salva to be the pastor now, and I ask that you will help us, give us grace and mercy, and help us to become what we should be according to your word. Thank you for sustaining uh, Mom Liberty and Mom Ruth and the men and the ladies and the deacons of the church, and I thank you, Lord, for sustaining this ecclesia for 325 days plus, almost 41 weeks, and almost 11 months. Next month will be the one year anniversary ng lockdown na ito, ng, ng tinatawag na pandemic na ito na tumama sa Pilipinas. But we're so thankful that we can see not the bigness of the pandemic, but the bigness of our God. Help us, Lord. Give us grace and mercy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So thank you very much. You know, may isang church leader na lumapit sa kanyang pastor. At sabi niya sa pastor niya, Pastor, hindi ko po alam kung ano nangyayari sa akin. I feel empty inside. You see? Ito yung confession na makikita mo na naging concern yung pastor. Kasi itong, itong young man na to, itong isa sa mga leaders ng church na ito, faithful siya. Faithful, kasamang magbisita, kasamang kumakanto sa choir, kasamang uh, nagsaserve, kasamang nagka-counsel. He was a very faithful lay person. At laging kapag mayroong meeting, nandudun tong, tong taong ito. And then all of a sudden, sabi ni tong taong ito, Pastor, I feel empty inside. Then the pastor said, tell me about it. Sabi mo sa akin, nangyari? Well, I, I just feel like I'm going to the motion. Nagsaserve ako. Kumakanta ako. I'm helping people. I'm attending the church services. You may see me singing. You may see me serving. You may see me doing these things. But I would like to say, I don't energize myself anymore. Yung pagdalo sa church, yung pagbasa ng Bible, yung pag-awit, it do not energize me anymore. I'm tired of doing stuff. I'm living in a lifeless religion. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, ito po mismo yung sinabi ni Malakay dito po sa mga tao sa panahon niya. Sabi ng panahon, but curse be the deceiver. Okay? Sumpain ang nandaraya na mayroon sa kanyang kawan. Okay? na nangako, nagsakripisyo ng corrupting. Okay? Sa dakilang hari, siya ay dakilang hari. Sabi ng Panginoon mga kubo, I am the great king, said the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Mga minamahal, I would like to challenge you. Bible Baptist Church of Katipunan has been in existence in this part of the Philippines in, in Cebu for such a long time, 60 plus years. Mga kapatid, mga iksuon, yung mga men, yung mga matatagal na. Okay? I would like to say, are you going to the motion? Anong ibig sabihin yung go to the motion? It means you just do something out of habit. Okay? Ibig sabihin you're just doing it out of formalities without enthusiasm. Meaning, nagtatrabaho ka pero wala ng pag-ibig involved. May routine, pero walang personal invol involvement. Ang meron tayo ay mechanical manner. Wala nang interest in whatever we're doing. At ito po yung ating dapat makita. Sa cheerful giving principles, sa stewardship principle, sa pagsaserve sa, sa mission, hindi po dapat going to the motion, hindi po dapat out of habit, hindi po dapat gagawa ng formalities, pero walang enthusiasm, hindi po dapat routine, na walang personal involvement, hindi dapat mechanical manner. No. Sabi natin, save tayo. 
Sabi natin mga kapatid, we demonstrate that our faith when we follow the Lord in baptism at umunod tayo through the waters of baptism at sinasabi natin, baptist tayo. Pero mga kapatid, bawat isa sa atin na may tendency na isang araw, perhaps save ka, perhaps obedient ka sa, sa, sa baptism, perhaps nandiyan dyan ka, tagwe-pray ka. But we might be in every corner of the church at almost every time. But the truth is, we're only going through the motion. Wala nang zeal, wala nang expectation, wala nang joy, wala nang love. Mechanical na lang eh. You see? Ang aming pong simbahan ay 36 years. Halos kalahati po ng edad ninyo. Mga minamahal, I would like to challenge you tonight. Okay? Don't ever do the work of God out of routine. No more zeal, no more love, no more enthusiasm, no more expectation. You guard your heart. You guard your faith. It either you make your heart right with God right now, or soon you're going to fall away from the faith. And he will never be able to come back. Alam niyo po mga minamahal, yung mga hudyon na nakatira sa Jerusalem. Okay? They were just going to the motion. They were worshiping. They were worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of Lords. When Malachi arrived at the scene, pag sinabi nating Malachi, siya po yung mansero ng Panginoon. Siya po ilalaki, he shrouded in mystery. Wala pong pagkakakilalan sa kanya maliban sa salitang messenger. Okay? The Lord said, my messenger. Siya po ay dinescribe sa Old Testament as a vigorous, clear-cut personality who strongly opposed yung easy naman na nagtitempt ng mayroong tinatawag na, na, ta, na hindi tama dun sa templo at sa mga bagay tungkol sa Diyos. Ayaw niya na maging careless sa mga manapaltaya, sa, offer, sa, 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 sa worship, na offend itong si Malakay. Tinadala ng Panginoon si Malakay to restore the genuine worship based on a true relationship with Him. Siya po yung fearless reformer na nagsalita without any hesitation and embarrassment. Kanya nga po mga minamahal, He was the last prophet, minor prophet in the Old Testament. Inaddress niya yung mga Diyo na nakabalik dun sa land after living in exile for 70 years. They rebuilt the temple na re-establish ang worship of God. Externally, everything seemed okay. But inwardly, the cancer of complacency ate away their commitment. Mga iksuon dyan sa Bible Baptist Church of uh, Katipunan. Baka mamaya, nandiyan dyan ka, nagdadrive ka. Waki, you've been a, you, you have been a very, very faithful ally of Dr. Di Salva. You see? Ham, you've been, you know, you have been doing a lot of wonderful things. I would like to challenge you. Don't do it without seal. Don't do it without expectation. Don't do it without joy. Don't do it without love. Mga kapatid, mga ano ba, stall. You see? Don't ever do the work of God that we are just going through the motion. Huwag nating ahayaan na yung cancer of complacency kakainin ng ating commitment. As God's final spokesman prior to John the Baptist, Malachi arrived to challenge God's people. In fact, the book of Malachi is structured in a seven-cycle argument between God and His people. Makikita mo, magtatanong si Malachi, sasagot ang mga tao. Okay? Nagkaroon po ng tinatawag na pag-uusap. Ang book of Malachi, ito po ay nagkaroon ng tinatawag na aklat na kung saan mayroong form of dialogue or argument in which God speaks and the people answer back. Mga iksuon, I would like to say, God tells the people how He expects them to live. May karapatan po ang Panginoon na sabihin sa atin, this is how I, how, how I should worship, this is how you should live, this is how you should treat me. God tells His people how much He loves them with a tender, affectionate, and with unconditional love. In return, mga minamahal, ginahugma ka ng gino, anong ginagawa natin? In response, our reasonable response to the worship to Him is with devotion and sacrifice. Anything less, anything less with devotion and sacrifice would be devious. Unfortunately, ito mga hudyo na ito, naging insincere. They go through the motion. So God allowed Malachi, my messenger, okay, pinadala to this apathetic, complacent people, calling them back to go back to the serious worship. And God told them, God is telling them right now, right here, this is how you should worship me. This is how you should serve me. This is, you should, this is how you should treat me. 
Huwag niyong hahayaan that coldness in worship, coldness in faith will be synonymous in your coldness in your relationship with God. Ito rin po sinabi ng Revelation chapter 3, verse number 16. Ito po yung rebuke ng church, okay? Dito po sa tinatawag na church sa, 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 sa Revelation. Sabi niya yun, so then, when, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out, out of my mouth. Kapag ka, ikaw ay, you know, hindi ka mainit, hindi ka malamig, isusuka kita. Ew! Can you just imagine? If you were just going to the motion, if you will not, there is no more sin, no more expectation, no more love, no more faith, no more, no more, no, no more passion to God. Sabi ng Diyos, I will spew you out. Mga kapatid, kung ayaw mong isuka ka ng ino, kung ayaw mong i-reject ka ng Panginoon, we better check the way we treat God in our worship. Okay? If we're just going to the motion in our worship with God, we better start mending our ways before it becomes too difficult or too late for us to go back to our first love. The question now is this. In our stewardship conference, how does God expect me to worship Him? Pastor, stewardship too, ah. But worship, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you later. I'll give you something wonderful. Kanya tayo nagiging mag steward because we would like to worship God. The best way to express that you worship God is not saying, Hallelujah, praise God, Amen, Amen. No, 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 no. It's the way we worship Him. Okay? How does God expect me to worship Him? Number one, with great reverence. Okay? With great reverence. Mga kabatid, mga iksuon, dapat makita natin kung mananambahan ka. Okay? Maaring maganda damit mo. Maral bitbit mo yung Bible mo. Maral naligo ka. Maral hawak mo yung tinatawag na offering envelope mo. But if there is no great reverence, what is that? Without no great reverence, that is nothing. You know what? Malachi 1, 6 says, Malachi chapter 1, verse number 6, A son honored his father and his servant his master. If I then be your father, where is my honor? If I then be your master, where is my fear? And the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. And you say, wherein have we despised thy name? Imagine sabi ng pulong sa gino, iginagalang ng anak ang kanyang ama, ang alila ang kanyang Panginoon. Kung ako'y ama, nasa ang dangal ko? Kung ako'y Panginoon, nasa ang takot sa akin? Mga kapatid, in the original Hebrew word, honor means literally to be heavy. Meaning, wow, bigatin. Meaning, pag inonor mo ang ating Pangulo, pag inonor mo ang ating Mayor, ang ating Gobernador, ang ating Congressman, meaning, when you honor somebody, you treat him with, as a heavyweight in your life, with extreme importance. Someone with a great significance. Someone who is huge. Mga kapatid, is that the way we honor God? Or are we just going to the motion? Gigising ka kasi Sunday, nasanay ka, simula nung young people ka, simula nung ikaw lumaki sa Sunday school, lumaki ka, binibitbit ka, so nasanay ka lang. Do we still give God the reverence, the honor, huge, bigatin, heavyweight? Is that the way we treat God? When God says in Ten Commandments, honor your father and your mom, He's not just saying obey them. He's not saying respect them, meaning treat them as if He is truly significant to you. You know what God is saying here? I am a father. I am a master. I expect honor. I expect reverence. Kapatid, iksuon. Kapatid, kamisat. Sabi ng mga Is this the way we treat God? If He is a father, where is the reverence? If he is the master, where is the honor? You know what God is telling us tonight? Don't treat me with contempt. Don't look down on me in your mind. Don't hate me in your heart. Don't disrespect me with your actions. Mag soon, ito ho nakakatakot. Dahil may pandemia for, from since March 15 up to now. Yung lockdown sa inyo dyan sa Cebu. Okay? Antindi. Okay? Ganun din sa amin sa Luzon. Napakadali sa atin na i-look down ng Diyos kung ang ginoo ay totoo, kung ang ginoo ay makapangyayon. Bakit naghihirap ako? Ba't nagsaray ko pa niya namin? Ba't nakamas ako? Pwede naman niyang sal alisin niya na. You see? Now listen, sometimes we don't understand that God allows this hardship 
not to make our lives hard, but for us to see that in life, God is all we need. God is all we want. God is the only answer, not the vaccine, not the, the IATF, not the doctors. It is God. Okay? Kanya huwag mong ahayaan na dahil nasaktan ka, dahil meron kang mga pinipipay na hindi binigay, dahil meron kang mga, uh, you know, mga murmuring sa puso mo, nagkocomplain ka. Tapos hindi na natin i-worship ang Diyos. Far more than the gifts on the altar na ibibigay mo, far more than the tithes and the offerings on the altar is the heart of the worshiper. Kamusta ang kasing-kasing? ng bawat isa sa atin. Kamusta ang puso natin? Are we still in love? Do we give Him honor? Do we give Him reverence? God wants a heartfelt attitude of honor and respect toward Him. Ito yung attitude that recognizes of who God is. Kapatid, sino ang ginoo sa iyong kabuh kabuhi? Sino ang ginoo? You see? How gracious God has been to you. Kung ngayon, mga kapatid, tumibilang tayo from March 15, 2020, ngayon po ay January of 2021. Have you ever realized na kung bakit hindi ka nagkaroon ng COVID? Kung bakit you still have food on your table, you still have clothes on your back, you still have roof over your head, you're still smiling, not because you're good, not because you have masks, not because you're, you're washing your hands, no! Because God has protected you. Tapos pupunta ka sa, sa bahay, sa man, pupunta ka sa buluhato ng ino, pupunta ka, magbabasa ka ng pulong sa ino, wala ng puso, shh, hey! Don't. God, say, where's my honor? Where's my honor? Years ago, yung pinakamagaling, isa sa mga famous preachers sa Amerika, si Henry Ward Beecher, ang mga tao ay pumupunta sa eklesinya niya. One Sunday, he was absent. Meron isang visiting preacher na papalit sapagkat siya po ay wala. And then nakita ng visiting preacher nung siya pumunta na sa pulpit at na-realize ng mga tao na wala si Henry Ward Beecher. Yung mga members, isa-isang nagtayuan, umaalis na. Eh, wala pala si pastor eh. Alis na lang ako dito. Sabi ng visiting preacher, may I have your own attention please? Before you go out, those of you who came here to worship Henry Ward Beecher, you may now withdraw from this ecclesia and go home. But all of you who came to worship God, you may stay. Mga iksuon, tanong ko sa'yo. Are you coming here because you would like to see Dr. Gisalva? Are you coming here because Kent Gisalva is your friend? Or are we coming here because God has been good, God has been good, because you acknowledge that He is somebody that we should revere, somebody that we should be heavyweight, somebody that we should worship, not going to the motion. As a believer in Christ, I must come to church with a primary purpose of giving honor and praise to God. Iksuon, huwag kang magpunta sa, sa buluhato ng ginoo kasi nasanay ka lang. Kasi wala nang joy. Kasi wala nang, wala nang, wala nang sil. Wala nang enthusiasm. Wala nang anticipation. You know what? This is where we should see ourselves. We should examine ourselves tonight. Am I here to give praise and glory to God? Am I here? Meaning, the way you sit down, the way you sing, the way you conduct yourself, the way you lift your voice, the way you sing and lift your voice to God, it should glorify and it should praise God. Anong sabi ng pulong sa ginoo? Psalm 5, 7. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Nakita mo? As for me, sa ganang akin, Ako'y pupunta sa iyo sa kasagan kagandahang loob, kasaganan, in the multitude of thy mercy. Mga kapatid, huwag tayong pupunta sa gawain ng Diyos to worship Him in superficial reasons. Ano po yung mga superficial reasons? To hear Dr. Gisalba perhaps? To hear Pastor Kent perhaps? To watch their children kasi mag-special mag number? Or kasi nandudun yung kanyang friends? O kasi meron siyang tinatawag na obligation na dapat mo-fulfill? 
O kaya meron siyang i-enhance the business opportunity. Magsimba tayo kasi meron akong mga downline dyan. Or to see what everyone else is wearing. You see? I remember one person, tabi niya sa asawa niyang baba, lalaki, sweetheart, nakita mo yun, bago yung kanyang pandamit, nakita mo yun, bago yung kanyang, yung, yung kanyang, yung sapato, nakita mo yun. Alam mo, sabi ng asawa ng lalaki, alam mo, ang dami yung nakikita, dapat makita mo, Panginoon. Are you going to the motion? Is God a center of your worship? Is God a center of your honor of worship and praising God? Yung ba dahilan natin? The only one reason why you come to church, to Bible Baptist Church Katipunan, why you worship, why you listen to the preaching of Dr. Armidy Salva, of Pastor Kent De Salva, or whoever the preacher behind the pulpit, the only acceptable thing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is to give honor and praise to God. Worship is not an attempt to entertain worshipers. Now, worship is not to stir up your emotion. Worship is our attempt to focus our attention to give honor on God. Sa panahon natin ng pandemya, pag hindi mo isinama ang ginoo sa kiyong kinabuhi, pag hindi mo sinama ang Diyos sa pag-iisip at sa puso mo, ang makikita mo pandemic, ang makikita mo kakulangan, ang makikita mo kahirapan, ang makikita mo rasyon, ang makikita mo ayuda, ang makikita mo pandemya, pagsasara, ng tinataw na Shangri-La. You know, pagsasara ng nation. Makikita mo, yung 2,600 na employee ng PAL na wala. But pag nag-worship ka, okay, you will only put your attention and focus your attention on God and to honor Him. Lord, you're bigger than this pandemic. You're bigger than this wonderful, you know, challenge that we have. Worship is not an attempt to indoctrinate person. Worship, first of all, is an attempt to focus our attention on God and to honor Him. Hindi ka nagpunta sa buluhato ng gino kasi nandun yung crush mo. Pag yan ang crush mo, okay, na hindi naman yan ang gusto ng Panginoon sa iyo, masaktan ka. Masasaktan ka. Okay? Mami, ang kota sabi mo na, it really hurts. It, masasaktan ka, sinasabi ko sa iyo. Hindi magiging maganda yan. Okay? What we should be doing right now is to focus our attention on God. Doon dapat sa ginoo, okay? Not on what your seatmate is talking about. Not on what is in your cell phone. Not on your collectibles or prospective customer. Not even on your household chores. When we come to worship, our focus should be entirely on one person, God. His songs, His pledges, His system, His word. So when I come to worship, God must have no rival in my heart and in my thoughts. Yung bang sasabi mo, Ginoo, ikaw ang nasa isip ko, ikaw ang nasa puso ko. You see? Yun yun eh. Wala dapat kaagaw. Hindi dapat, anong oras na, meron pa akong gagawin. No. So how God Expect me to worship Him with great reverence. Number two, how does God expect me to worship Him with great response? Okay? Not just with reverence, but with great response. We worship Him with the best response. What is the best response? Ano yung magandang tugon? How do we answer back to God? Ano sabi ng Malakai 1, 6? Okay? A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If I then be a father, where is my honor? Where is my honor? If I then be a master, where is my fear? Said the Lord of hosts, O priest that despised my name. And you say, wherein have we despised thee? Verse number 7, you offered polluted bread upon my altar. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. You know what God says? Sabi mo, tatay ako, nasa ng aking honor? Sabi mo, master ako, nasa ng aking, uh, ang aking tinatawag na, na fear, yung fear, yung reverence? Sabi, saka namin nilapastangan, saka namin ninamak. When you offer polluted bread upon my altar, you, when you offer polluted bread, you see? And the Lord's table is contemptible. When you say something is contemptible, you look at it as a cheap, Cheap, cheap pie. Di ba? Walang halaga. You give no importance. You treat it like a garbage. 
Your actions will reveal what little value has in your heart. Yun ba yun? You know? Is that the way you treat God now? Naalala ba nung una kang maligtas? Nung una mo intindihan na ikaw ay makasalanan, mapapahamak, you deserve nothing but hell, but God's grace prevailed. God's grace taught you that Jesus left heaven, go down to earth, you know, born in a manger, and He was, He lived like a man, dependent on the Holy Spirit. He, His body was smashed, was roughly smashed, there was no beauty to him. He was spat upon. Nilagyan ng koronang tinik just for one reason, to die for you and for me. Di ba? Tapos ganun ang worship natin? Tapos ganun natin siya itatrato? You see? God made His allegation to the priest, to the professional worshipers. They should have none better. They were responsible for people's obedience. Now the priest replied with a question. Were in how we despise your name? Sabi ng ginoo sa kanila, by presenting defied, defiled food on my altar. Have we defiled you? When you say the Lord's table is contemptible. You see? Contemptible. Meaning, yung, yung hapagkainan, yung table ng ginoo, hamak, walang halaga. Ano sabi ng Malachi 1.8? Pag in-offer nyo ba yung blind sacrifice niyan, hindi ba masama yan? Pag in-offer mo yung pilay at may sakit, is the rival? Ibigay mo nga kay Governor Gwen Garcia yan? Ibigay mo nga kay Mayor yan? Ibigay mo nga kay Congressman yan? Ibigay mo nga sa Presidente natin yan? Will he be pleased with you? Will he accept you as a person, said the Lord? You know what God is telling us tonight? Huh? Sabi mo, mahal mo ako. Sabi mo, ikaw ang ako ang tagapagligtas mo. Sabi mo, gracious ako. Then why are you contempting me? Why are you treating me like a garbage? You give no importance to what I'm saying. The Lord is saying, if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? If you offer the lame the sick, is that evil? If you offer to the governor, will he be pleased? Will he be pleased? Will he accept it as a person? Wow! Won't he be pleased with? Won't he be pleased with you? Will he show you favor? Sabi ng gino. The priests were not just accepting just second best from the people. What they do is the worst. Nagdadala sila ng may sakit na sheep, may sakit na mga goats. They were worse. They were offering worthless animal. May I remind you? Every Animal sacrifices in the Old Testament is a picture of the Lamb of God which taken away the sins of the world. My friends, iksuon, mga kapatid ko sa ginoo, lahat ng offering is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kanya nga sa Old Testament, pag mag offer ka, pitong araw babantayan, on the eighth day, sa araw ng panahon, doon nang pakakawalan. Tapos narito yung mga priests, yung saserdote, they were offering not just second best, yung may sakit, yung may kurikong, yung may luslos, yung pilay, yung bulag, yung may kulang. Worthless! Ikaw nga, bigyan mo nga si Governor Garcia ng alay, matutuwa ba siya? Now listen, being the holy God of heaven, being the holy God of the, of the earth, the Lord refuses to accept anything but our best. Why? Why? Does God need our money? Na, not at all. Ang ginoo ang pinakamayaman sa atin dito? Ha? Dako ang kayamanan niya. Anong sabi ng Psalm 50 verse 10? For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Lahat yan sa kanya. Is God a greedy God? Of course not. God is the most giving person this world would ever know. Anong sabi ng ginoo? 1 Corinthians 2.9. Tingnan mo ha. Nasusulat. Hindi pa nakikita ng mata. Hindi pa narinig ng tainga. Hindi pa pumasok sa puso ng tao. 
ang mga bagay na hinanda ng ginoo sa mga naggahugma sa kanya, sa nagmamahal sa kanya. Wow! Can you just imagine? God has something wonderful for you. He's preparing something for you. He's saying you, hey, if you love me, if you serve me, if you worship me with reverence and with fear and with honor, and you give me glory and you honor me, I have something for you. Hindi pa na-invento ng Samsung. Hindi pa nakita ng, 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 ng Apple. Hindi pa nakita ito ng Huawei. Hindi pa ito na-invento ng China. Okay? Sabi niya, ibigay ko sa iyo yan. We are the greedy people, not God. You see? Our greediness cost us to offer worthless offering. Dahil sa gusto natin na marami tayo, ang pinili natin, the sickly, the lame, yung mayroong kapansanan, yun ang ibinibigay natin. The only way for God to cure my greed and your greed is to teach us what honorable giving is. You see? Anong sabi ng Panginoon sa Proverbs 23 verse 26? Okay? Anong sabi? My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Can you imagine? Hindi ba strange ito? God is using the words, give me, give me. Hindi ba tayo yung nagsasabi, Lord, give me this, give me that, bigay mo sa akin to, ha? Now, the table is turned. This is not the Creator saying to the Creator, give me, but rather, the Creator saying to the Creature, give me. Anong hiningi niya? Kasing-kasing mo, yung puso. The great benefactor becomes the petitioner. The great giver becomes the receiver. The landlord becomes the tenant. The provider becomes the beggar. The satisfied becomes the, the, the seeker. The door becomes the entrance. The living water is now thirsty. The bread of life is hungry. The way grows for your heart. The prince of peace fights for you. You know what he said? Give me your heart. God wants your heart. Not just your money, but your heart. Kung magbigay ka man, maghatag ka mo ng pera, Okay? Nang wala ang glory, wala ang reverence, wala ang response, contemptible binibigay mo, zero. Zip, nada, nothing. It's nothing, nothing, nothing. Sayang! Why does God want your heart? There's only one possible reason. Why do He want your heart? He loves you. He loves you. There is nothing that He needs that we have apart from our love. He is too rich for us to make him richer. He is too great for us to make him greater. He is too good for us to make him better. He is too strong for us to make him better. He is too strong to make him stronger. He is too glorious for us to give him more glory. If he, we give him all of our goodness, it will not make him any better. If we give him all our riches, hindi po siya magiging mayaman. If we give him strength, it will not make him any stronger. If we give him wisdom that I have, it would not make him wiser. If we give him all our knowledge, it will not make him any more smarter. If we give him all the glory, it would may not make him any more glorious. If we give him all the greatness that we have, it would not make him any greater. If we give him all power, it would not make him any more powerful. To give wealth without giving your heart is abomination. To pray without giving your heart is a mockery. To sing in the choir, jinky. To play the piano without your heart is a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. To work without giving your heart is an insult. To teach without giving your heart is ignorance. To preach without giving your heart is hypocrisy. To give, to serve, and without giving your heart is fraud. To witness without giving your heart is perjury. Listen, where is your heart? Are you serving God with your heart? Meron ba bang passion? Meron ba bang enthusiasm? Years ago, I faced the reality that I would never be a great orator or scholar. And that I did not have a great talent. I could never be like Dr. Abante. I could never be like Dr. Jen Army de Salva. I could never be even like, uh, you know, Ken de Salva. I could never be like them. I did, however, I realized that I could not do one thing as well as anybody. Pwede kong gawin to. I could give God my heart. Hindi ako pwede maging magaling na gaya ni Dr. de Salva. Kasing galing ni Mike Wells, pero pwede ko ibigay ng aking puso. 
If we are to worship God His way, the only way to worship Him is to render God the honor due to His name. To give Him your heart so that our utmost attention, our highest praise, your greatest love, our choicest possessions can be given. There is no honor in giving God less than our best. Walang karangalan in giving the worst that we have. But instead, it become an alms. And I may remind you, God is no beggar that we give Him alms. God is no waiter that we give Him a tip. God is no tax collector that we give Him the least portion of what we receive and even out of obligation. God is not an SSS that we give Him contribution. God is an honorable God. He deserves an honorable giving. You know what Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 says? Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were and are created. God. Pero nung magdala mga hudyo ng animals that hindi good for breeding, it was not going to fetch much at the price of butcher's shop. They gave it to the Lord. You know what they did? They contempt God. That is contemptible. You know what God said? I don't want those tainted sacrifices. Wala akong pakailam dyan. Hindi ko kailangan yan. Imagine, the one who born the penalty of my sin and your sin, the one who left heaven just to die on the cross, bibigyan mo ng contemptible sacrifice? Ano sabi ng Leviticus 1.3 and verse number 4? If his offering be burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. Without blemish, he shall offer it of his own voluntary. Kanyang giving, hindi pinipilit. Kanya kung ay magbigay, wag. Tapat kusa. Okay? Psst, kusa. He shall offer voluntary, without blemish, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Adam sabi, verse number 4, He shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering. It shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Mga kapatid, God is telling us, I want you to remember my son. My son, who is a perfect sacrifice, without blemish, he died on the cross for you. I remember one time there was a coach in a little league. He always expected his players to play the best, to go out. One time he saw in a practice one of his players that was not giving his all. Tinawag niya ito, halika. Sabi niya ganun, hey Rick, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. And tonight, Bible Baptist Church Katipunan, I told my church here in Pasay, God is telling us tonight, you can do better than that. You may say, better than what? Better than the blemished sacrifice, better than the leftovers. Are we giving him the leftover? I praise God. To God be the glory. Okay? To God be the glory. He enabled me that last 2020, I was surprised. Okay? Last January of 2020, I made a promise to God. I'm giving 60% of my offerings to God, 10% tithes, 20% love offering, 30% mission. I have been giving that since 1991. And you know what? I'm giving six months of my salary or my support from my church to the ecclesia. Every year since 2000. Then 2020 comes. Okay? Do my thing in 2020. I have to renew my faith. I have to update. You know? Sabi ko, Lord, Nagre-renew ko. Sabi ko sa family ko, starting this Sunday, January, I am contemplating. I might add over my 60% in my six months, I might add 3,000 per week. Kung kakayanin ko, I'll go for 7,000. Nakita ko na binibigay ko 3,000. First Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday ng January. Kaya ko eh. So, no fourth Sunday, ginawa ko ng 7,000. Okay? 2,000 sa mission, 5,000 sa mga commitment ko, over and above my commitments. Then this pandemic came, March 15, 2020. 
I was shocked. But I said, Lord, pinangako ko to sa eh. I will not offer anything that costs me nothing. I will not offer contemptible things. Tinapos ko po yun, mga kapatid. Every Sunday, pagising ko ng umaga, sasabihin ni Ate Ellen, offering mo. What? Yung dagdag, yung dagdag. Mm, okay. Pag meron kang Ate Ellen, parang may MMDA ka. Huhulihin ka. Asan offering mo? Nangako ka sa ginoo. She was so strict. Kinukuha niya. 7,000. Seven. You know what? Few months later, December of 2020, our accountant, the people working at the finance ministry ng church, when they were giving report, December 31st, that was the last Sunday of the month of December of the, month of the year 2020. She was so excited to say, Hindi ko po mapigilan ang sarili ko kasi tuwan-tuwa po ko na Pastor Sako, our pastor, gave 1.2 million offerings. Wow! Could you just imagine that? You see? I did not earn millions, but I gave million to God. Tuwa po ako eh. I'm not I'm not rich. You see, ang sa akin lang, may pandemya. Ang sa akin lang, may paghihirap. Ang sa akin lang, meron ng problema, limitas, limitasyon, meron ng mga kakulangan. Ngayon ko patutunayan that my God deserves my honor and my God deserves the best. You know what I did? I focus on Him. Not on my needs, on Him. I focus on how good God is. I focus on how gracious God is. Lahat tayo tinamaan ng pandemya. Hindi ko po binaba yung commitment ko. Lalo ko pong pinag-igting. Lalo ko pong pinag-igi. Tinapos ko. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, natutuwa ako. Isa pa dyan, meron kami mga piggy banks, mga baboy. Hinuhulugan ko huwi ng 1,000 um, a week. Yun po yung pangtulong namin sa missions conference namin. Katatapos lamang po ng aming missions conference last week, okay? February 3, 4, and 5, okay? Well, dahil may pandemya, we're so thankful that we have 126 delegates coming from other places, okay? They travel. One, one person came from all the way from Tuban, si Mishak Madulin. Nagbiyahi siya. Nakarating dito. I was shocked. Sabi ko, ba't mo ginawa yan? I would like to worship with you. Gusto ko makarating dito. Well, anyway, we were able to give wonderful treatment to the pastors. Why? They were workers of God. And nakakatuwa, hindi po napigil ang pasay na magtrato na maganda sa mga pastor. Bakit? Because pastors are God's spokesmen. Natutuwa ako that the members of the church, I wrote them letters, this is how much you're gonna give for missions conference. Nagpadala sila ng contribution na sa pagkain. Bawat isa. You know our philosophy in our church? Start where you are. Use what you've got. Ano ka? Tinder sa palengke? Start there. Ano ka? Driver ng tricycle? Start there. Ano ka? Estudyante? Doon tayo magsimula. Start where you are. Use what you've got. So pinagsama-sama namin. Abay, naging marangyat at maganda. Nakakatuwa po mga kapatid. You see? May pandemya. You see? And then here you are. I'm humbled by what God did. I'm not serving God. God worked through me. God has been so gracious to, to use me to challenge our people that even in this pandemic time, we can still give more than that we could. Imagine, di ba? To praise be to God. Now listen. You can do better than that. Better than what? Than blemish sacrifices and better than the leftovers. Nagpakita po ang ginoo ng three standards for sacrifices that is acceptable to God. Okay? Ano po yung biblical standards for sa sa sacrifices? Unang-una, number one, give the best. Give the best. Ano sabi ng na Numbers 18, 12? All the best of the oil, all the best of the wine, of the wheat, and of the first fruits of them which they shall offer to them have I given. Ang pinakamainam. Naranasan mo na ito, na umorder ka sa Lazada, umorder ka sa Shopee, okay? Inaasaan mo, nagbayad ka na, or COD, then dumating yung package mo, at nung binuksan mo yung package mo, pagtingin mo, ay, iba dumating, you see? Nilaban mo, lumiit. 
Di ba? Kumupas. Ano pakiramdam mo? Di ba saan mo? Parang dinaya ako nito. Di ba? Parang niloko ako ah. You see? Alam niyo ba mga kapatid? I wonder how often God felt the same way. When we give Him worthless, may sakit, may kurikong, may buni, may tanggal ang tainga. You see? Kung ikaw na insulto ka, pag may nagbigay ng hindi maganda sa'yo, okay? pag may nagbigay ng low value sa'yo, yung hindi capacity na galing sa puso ng mga tao, nagagalit ka eh. You get angrier. When you receive less from the people that you love, from the people who say they love you. Di ba? Ito lang. Just less. The lesser you give, the lesser you feel your worth is to those who give them. Alam mo yun? It really hurts. But sakit yun. Not to be loved by the people you don't, you, who, you do, who don't know you is okay eh. Not to be loved by people you have no investment is understandable. Pero yung taong pinaglingkuran mo, yung kasama mo, pinagpray mo, you will be treated less. That is donor. That is not only insult, it is a dishonor. nag po ito ng feeling of being in love to the lowest degree. Listen, mga kapatid. Sabi ng mga tao, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Or perhaps you can put it this way, the worth of my love is expressed in the worth of what I give. Yung halaga ng pag-ibig mo ay ipinapakita ng halaga ng ibinibigay mo. We're not just talking here about money. We're talking about the whole package. How much of your heart is in it? How much love is in it? Okay? Hindi ka nagbibigay kasi may pera ka. Hindi ka nagbibigay kasi businessman ka. Hindi ka nagbibigay kasi professional ka. Nagbibigay ka kasi alam mo, tama. You see? Naalala mo sa Luke 21? Tignan mo, Luke 21 verse 2. At nakita ng Panginoon ang dukhang babae, a certain poor widow casting inter two mites. Verse 3. At sinabi niya, of a truth, I sent you, this poor widow has cast in more than they all. Bakit? Verse 4. For all these have their abundance cast unto offering of God, but she of her penury hath cast in all the things that she had. You see? Anong sabi ng Diyos? Itong balong babae, mahirap siya. Okay? Mahirap. Okay? Pobre. Purdoy. Okay? Purdoy itong babae ito. Mahirap. Pero nagbigay ng two mites. Nagbigay ng two mites. Napansin ng Diyos. What is the difference? The heart. What's the difference? Faith. Tawang. Do you give God because you truly and wholly love Him? Do you give your best? Is there heart? I always say, start where you are. Use what you got. The biblical standards for sacrifice. Give the best. Number two, give to God first. Give to God first. What does it mean? Mga minamahal, itinuturo po ng pulong sang ginoo. Deuteronomy 14.23 And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place where he has shall choose to place his name there, the tide of the corn, the tide of the wine, and thine oil, and the first thing of thy herbs and of thy flock, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. You know what God is saying here? Okay? The reason why you're giving your tithes, your offerings, your missions, your commitments, okay, is to teach you to put God first, to teach you to fear the Lord thy God, meaning God is never to get leftovers. Hindi niya gusto yung tira. Yung bang kakain ka sa restaurant, kakain ka sa isang magalangyang restaurant, sasabi mo, ay, pakibalot mo na lang to. Tapos, bigay natin kay Pastor Kent Di Salva kaysa naman mapanis, kaysa pakain natin sa baboy. Do you think Pastor Kent Di Salva will be happy with that? Come on! Hindi ho totoo yan. Alam mo, meron isang pastor na tumanggap na tinatawag ng mga, uh, ng mga gifts mula sa, sa kanyang church. Ba nakita niya may mga, may mga kahon, may mga canned goods to help us, to, to as a gift. Nung pagdating na sa parsonage, binuksan nila yung mga kahon, nakita nila may mga canned goods. Okay? Nilagay nila yung mga craft. They were thankful. They were appreciative. But when they began to get 
those canned goods from, from, from the boxes at ilalagay na doon sa, sa lagay nila, they were noticing and they noticed na yung iba expired. Yung iba, may kalawang na. You know, yung iba, wasak na. Yung pala dinonate. Left over. Alam mo, yung ganilang emotion na masaya, na naging jealous yung mga tao, quote kot napalitan ng sadness, napalitan ng, ganito ba tayo tatrato? I wonder if God feels the same way. God is not a scavenger that you give Him what is left with your money. Ay, may natira. Bigay na natin to sa ginoo. Mali. God is the most supreme, the most sovereign. Before the world came to being, God was there. Before you came to the being, God was here. Ano mo sabi ng ginoo sa atin? Exodus 20, 30, 23. Thou shalt love, shall have no other gods before me. Meaning, God is first, not the last. He deserves the first choice part of everything. Okay? Not the leftover of your budget. Not the leftover of your time. I remember when I got saved. That was 1985. But I was a part of the church 1983. Okay? I was 18 years old back then. Nakanta na ako sa choir. Nagsaserve na ako. May Bible study na ako. Akala ko save ako. Until Pastor Fardo preaches. The inward signs of those who are saved. Wala ako. And the inward signs of those who are not saved. Andun ako. Hindi ako nahiya na lumapit. Hindi ako nahiya sabihing, I'm not saved. I gave my heart February 10, 1985. 36 years ago. Pero I was in the church 38 years ago. Okay? 1983. I was second year in, in college. I told God, dito lang iikot ang buhay ko. Bahay, church, school, bahay, church, school, napokor, bahay, church, school, spring. Bahay, church, Spring until I resigned 1987 to be a part of the church staff, the pastor. I was the first staff. I was the first staff ng Golden Treasure Baptist Academy. I told God, I, gave, I have given you the best years of my life. I have given you my youth. And the last kung sabihin, dito ako na save, dito ako nagkaasawa, dito nagkaanak si Sister Ellen, dito lumaki mga anak ko. And by the way, Two weeks ago, two Thursdays ago, paring Ken De Salva, maring Ruth, kinasal yung aking firstborn. 31 years old. Okay? Tigulang na, tigulang na, tigulang na tayo. Okay? It was a joy. You know why? Literally, dito kami ikot. One church, one pastor for 38 years. I have given my best to God. My best talent, my best time. Now I'm near 60. And I said, God, extend my life. Don't lose my enthusiasm. Don't lose my, don't lose my joy. Don't, don't, don't allow me to lose my zeal. I don't want to go to the motion. I would like to still serve. Pag nakikita ko si Dr. G. Salva, pag nakikita ko, Si Pastor Abraham Balyega, pag nakikita ko si Pastor Vic Serrano, pag nakikita ko si Pastor Benny Abante, pag nakikita ko si Pastor Bing Scrupolo, pag nakikita ko si Dennis Ebert, pag nakikita ko si Delbert Hugi, pag nakikita ko si Boyd Lyons, wow! They have been in the ministry for quite so long. And they have never lost their passion. They have never lost their sin. They, have never, they never allow that they will be just going to the motion. They gave their best. Naiingit ako sa kanila. Sabi ko, Lord, kagayahin ko itong mga ito. Huwag mong hayaan ako mag, mag, mag-serve out of my, my, out of routine, out of habit. God is first, not the last. He deserves the first choice part of everything. The church is God's house. Huwag kang magdadala sa eklesiya dahil bulok na. My pastor always say, kasi meron ko isang member dati, sabi niya, pastor, meron po akong mga ano, salat set. Total, hindi namin pakinabangan. Diyan na sa church. Shh! Uy! Ang eklesiya ng Diyos, ang pastor, hindi ho jack shop owner. 
Huwag ka magbibigay dito. Yung hindi mo nga ma... Listen. One of my members, taas mo nga yung camera, gave this alabaster's crystal chandelier. Yung chandelier. Okay? Binigay po yan ng isang mag-asawa. Ang nagbigay niyan, lalaki, iglesia ni Kristo handog, na save. Okay? Nakita niyo po itong mga silya na ito sa unahan? Ito, ito, ito. Galing pong Italy yan. Okay? Binigay din la. Nakita mo mga silya rito sa harapan? Sa kabila? Okay? Galing din pong Italy. Okay? They bought it. Millions of pesos dahil lang katwiran nila pinaganda namin ang bahay namin, but hindi namin mapaganda ang eklesiya ng Panginoon. Have you seen this pulpit? This is a new pulpit. One of my members, a domestic helper in South Korea, saved 350,000 pesos every year, every month, in two years' time just to buy this pulpit from South Korea. So that sabi niya, Pastor, pobre man ko. Purdo yung family namin. Wala na akong asawa. But let me just say, thank you, Lord. Kasi yung kanyang anak, lumaki walang tatay. Lumaki sa church. Nag-aral. Grumaduate. Cum laude sa lasal. Board passer. Okay? Sabi niya, how should I thank God for all the benefits He have given me? You know what she did? Nag-save siya apart from her touch, apart from her first, apart from her sacrificial offer, apart from... She gave this pulpit na dumating last Thursday before missions conference, last Thursday before my 25th anniversary as a pastor in Bible Baptist Church. This pulpit was bought by a domestic helper in South Korea. Opa, opa. Ano nga sa'yo? In-offer niya. Imagine, a domestic helper, dili man siya mayaman, pobre, purdoy, pero naghatag, naghatag, oh, <clears throat> Grabe, ganda nito. Okay? Why? Sabi niya, Pastor, the church of God is where God meets His people in worship. The ecclesia is sacred. It's a magic place. Majestic place. Every corner, every gadget, everything here should speak of God's glory. Huwag tayo magdadala ng trash. Ang dadali natin, best your first. Okay? The best. Sh -sh -sh. The best. First. Pangatlo. Give what costs you. Giving should be sacrificial. When David felt the plague and he saw the devastation of people, in his heart he said, I would like to buy a threshing floor to build an altar for God. Sabi nung may ari sa araw na, bigay ko sa'yo libre. Sabi ni, ni David, na, 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 na. Shortcut yan eh. 2 Samuel 24, 24. And the king said to Aranua, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God, of that which that cost me nothing. So David brought the threshing floor and the oxen of 50 shekels of silver. Listen. David said, I insist that I buy it. I will not offer anything that cost me nothing. Mga kaigsuon, ngayong may pandemia, ngayon mo patunayan na ginahugma mo ang ginoo. Na mahal mo si Jesus. Mahirap, hindi madali, may pandemia, by His grace, kakayanin. Pwede. Nagawa ko nga eh. Am I right? Nagawa ko nga. You see? A missionary in Africa, 
receive a beautiful seashell as a gift from a student. Tinan niya, where did you get it? Sabi niya, I have to travel a long walk to the coast of Africa to get this special shell for you. You traveled so far to bring me such a wonderful present? Oh, yeah. The long walk is part of the gift. What does it mean to give less than the best? What does it look like to give to God last? Are you giving the best? Imagine you're spending time with Netflix. You're spending time with Mobile Legend. You're spending time, opa opa, sa Facebook, sa Instagram. Tapos you spend an hour, or no, less than an hour. You don't read the Bible. Imagine you bring your best to your career, the best energy, the best talent, the best motivation. But when it comes to serving God, okay lang? Mali. It's when we spend a lot of money for ourselves. Tapos sabi mo, uy, minatira, bigyan natin sa gino. Pakita mo nga ito. Church, sa katipunan, I want you to see this full grand piano. This one. Okay? This full grand piano. It's beautiful. You know what? I talked to Pastor Benny. I said, Pastor Benny, I heard that you're going to buy a brand new piano. I would like to tell this to you. Hindi ko kayang bayaran to ng buo. Pero kaya kong bayaran ng 100,000 a month. If you allow me. Ano ba mo? I will give it as my gift to the church. Ibibigay kong gift sa church. And he said, what? Yeah. Ikaw magbibigay sa church? Opo. Regalo ko sa church. Pumayag si Pastor Benny. Every month, hanggang matapos na mayaran ko, I am paying 100,000 of pesos every month. Then one time, kumakain kami. Sabi ko, Ma, can you please give me the ketchup? Sabi ni Ellen, wala. Uh, how about, you know, yung Tabasco, chili sauce. Chili, chi, chi, you know, hot sauce. Sabi ni Jap, Dad, wala. Nasa piano. Sabi ko, who told you na magdala ka ng ketchup sa piano? Dad, mali. Yung pera mo nasa piano. Kanya wala tayong ketchup at saka wala tayong hot sauce. Ha? Hindi ko naalala, hindi ko na malayan that because of my commitment to God to buy this grand piano, full grand piano, naapektuhan ang family ko. Naapektuhan. Pero alam mo, eh ano naman wala kaming ketchup? Eh ano naman wala kaming hot sauce? Ano kung wala kaming tabasco? Natutunan ko to sa Bible eh. I will not offer anything that cost me nothing. Mm. <clears throat> what sacrifice have you given to God? You see, imagine pag nanonood ka ng basketball, virtual na nga lang, subisigaw ka pa. Tapos pag nasa worship, pungko, pamati, pauli, pasaway. You see, Are you giving him the best, the first, and your all? What is acceptable worship? Acceptable worship is this. As a believer in Christ, I will offer to God my only, my own, only my first, my best, and my all. You know what? Matthew 22, 37 says, And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. I make no apologies when I challenge you to bring your best. I stand before you and say that God deserves the best. That God deserves your best. You're all. Now question now is this. Are you giving him the best? 
Are you giving him the first? Are you giving him your all? Meaning, what cost you? I don't know. But tonight, in our stewardship conference, I ask you, are you going through the motion? Are you just going? No more zeal. You see? You feel empty inside. <clears throat> you do it out of habit. Just for formalities, no more enthusiasm. Out of routine. No more personal involvement. Mechanical. No more zeal, no expectation. No more joy, no more love. Mechanical. Tonight, I challenge you. Will you give God your heart? Will you guard your faith? Will you go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm going to give.